Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. We have a better covenant upon better promises, and we have a better relationship with God. We were at such a desperate place that Andrew, it was like life. It was just life that was coming from the television. And every area in our life has been turned right side up. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Monday's broadcast of The Gospel Truth. Again today, I'm continuing to talk about a series that I've entitled, Observing All Things. This is taken from Matthew chapter 28, verse 20, where Jesus said, Teach them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And I tell you, the church has, as a whole, not been teaching people to observe all things that the Lord says. We have been picking and choosing and primarily just talking about eternal values, going to heaven or hell, but we haven't been teaching what the Scripture has to say about current issues, economy, uh, abortion, uh, and what we've been focusing on the last week was creation versus evolution. And I know that there's a lot of people that think, man, you do not need to counter evolution. Evolution counters the Bible. Last week, I gave a lot of scriptural uh, reasons for this. For instance, the scripture says that, that God commanded each animal to bring forth after its kind. That means that no species evolves from one species into another, which is de evolution is dependent upon that. I also brought out that the scripture says the wages of sin is death. And yet evolution believes that death happened eons, millions of years before Adam and Eve came along. And yet the Bible teaches that death is a result of Adam and Eve's sin. So that right there undercuts the authority of the Word of God. And I know as I bring some of these things out, some of you are thinking, well, man, you can't sit here and counter science. I mean, science has proven that evolution is an established fact. It hasn't. I don't believe that that's true. Uh, as a matter of fact, I know that many of you will sit there and immediately discount what I have to say because I've spent all of my time learning the Bible. And you may, some of you, probably just totally upset with me and everything about me, but others may say, well, I love you and you teach the Bible, but why don't you just stick with the Bible and not get into all of this stuff? You aren't a scientist. You don't know this. Well, let me bring a scientist on. Let me introduce you to Dr. Carl Baugh. I've already played some of his stuff, but we are discussing this very thing about is evolution a proven fact? And it's not. And I believe that if you hear it from somebody who's got some degrees and some secular credentials, and he's going to be using terminology that to me is Greek, but nonetheless, he's saying the same thing, that creationism, as the Bible teaches it, is correct, and evolution is a theory, and it's a flawed theory. Even the evolutionists don't agree. There are so many different interpretations of the way it happened, and they're constantly changing all of these things. So anyway, listen as I do this interview with Dr. Carl Ball from Creation Evidence Museum in Glen Rose, Texas, and he'll be sharing some things from a scientific standpoint showing you the flaws of evolution. If you've got all of this stuff, how is it that these scientists uh, gain so much inroad with this? And I, I go back in my mind to maybe the Scopes, is, is Scopes trial, is that what it was? Where oh, evolution yes, was? you brought up a very interesting discussion point. So is that where all of this began? How did we get to this point to where they are promoting as fact stuff that is theory and really has no basis in reality? Uh, there came an age of enlightenment. Now, I'm for enlightenment. You're an intelligent person. You're enlightened. You're able to uh, analyze things and ask profound questions and give profound answers. And, and we all continue to uh, seek for answers in life. And, and the more active our minds are, the more active our bodies are, the younger we are. Uh, I hope to be active until Jesus comes and until he raptures us away. Okay. Uh, there was the Age of Enlightenment, but the Age of Enlightenment introduced naturalism to try to explain everything in life, and life itself, and science in particular, with a naturalistic process. Now, science operates naturally because God set the laws. 
But to explain science without God establishing those laws has mm -hmm. never been possible. That's right. Leading evolutionists have not been able to explain second law of thermodynamics. Yep. That everything goes from ordered to disordered. It, it is. If you put an arrangement of flowers here and come back in a hundred years, it's not going to be better. It'll fall apart. You, you come back in a week and it's beginning to fall <laughs> That's apart. That's right. Everything goes from order to disorder. You cannot observe what evolution is claimed anywhere. Anywhere in the universe. In the universe. Uh, the stars are exploding and all of that's explained. Now they will sometimes say like a moth, you know, changes from this to that. But it's just a color phase of the exact same moth. Yes. There, there, there isn't this change that, that, that all of evolution is dependent upon observable, and yet they will claim that it is. You're talking about Biston Mysteria. And that's, the, that's what I meant to uh, say. Uh, yes, <laughs> about the, the moth and the Industrial Revolution uh, in England in particular. Uh, what they really don't say is those moths don't rest on those trees. Uh, they had to glue them on a tree to get a picture of it. Secondly, uh, you get moths that are going to be exposed for the birds and you'll get more of them eaten. So very quietly you get a, a different natural preservation. You see, uh, Charles Darwin used natural selection to say it produced new species and varieties. No, no it doesn't. No. It preserves what we already have. Right. So the age of enlightenment introduced naturalism. So when Charles Darwin came along, his theory was ready for adoption. There was people wanting to believe that. Wanting to believe it. There was an anti-religious segment in Europe. That's where Voltaire swore that the total elimination of Christianity. And, uh, and that was the age of enlightenment. And as, as soon as Voltaire died, yeah. <laughs> the British Bible Society bought his home in the press. He used to print his atheistic books I think printed it was, Bibles. I think it was exactly 100 years after his birth and he swore that he would eliminate the Bible, that it would not even be uh, acknowledged. On that anniversary, they printed Bibles in his house. On the From print. his press? Yes. <laughs> Isn't that... <laughs> that's awesome. That's astounding. That's, that's awesome. I love it. I love it. Well, this age of enlightenment meant that Charles Darwin had come at the right time. Now, there was a counterpart to Charles Darwin who came up with the same idea, but he wanted God included in this natural selection. Charles Darwin did not. Charles Darwin mentioned God in passing to begin with, but then later uh, never mentioned the name of God and, and denied God being involved. Well, now, in the last phrase of his book, I've heard that he, sa he ends by saying, surely there must be a God. Is that accurate or uh, inaccurate? Early, in early editions. Oh, he uh, uh, yes. edited that out? Oh, yes, edited that out. And in later books that he wrote, he edited God out altogether. But back to what you mentioned on the Scopes trial. Yeah, how did this become so prominent? Well, in Europe, it became prominent. Naturalism became prominent. Then in America, as we became more sophisticated, we became more like the Europeans. So there was uh, uh, the introduction of naturalistic thoughts. But America had been founded on principles that were unique. Mm -hmm. In every one of the preamble or the constitution or the charter, one of the three, of the original 13 colonies, there's a reference to the Bible, to the Savior, or it is God as creator in every one of them. America was raised up by God for a unique purpose. And unfortunately, we have strayed from that purpose and to that degree, we have brought judgment upon ourselves. But uh, this naturalism found introduction, but in Tennessee, there was a law in the public school system that you could not teach evolutionary theory. And uh, Scopes, who was an assistant coach, was enticed. He didn't teach it in his biology class, but he was enticed to do so, and he, and he only taught a bit of it. But enough for the evolutionists to bring attention. And uh, so he was actually, his fine was paid by a creationist, his fine for teaching, for disobeying the school laws. It was, 
you know, those were good, decent people. But ultimately, it made its way to the Scopes Evolution Trial. In the trial, you had Williams Jennings Bryan, a sincere creationist Christian, not totally informed on the issues, yeah. but we have to be, we have to continue research to be informed ourselves. What we now know, some of what we know, we didn't know 20 years ago. William Jennings Bryan was a very committed Christian and creationist. Clarence Darrow was the opposition attorney representing evolution. In the trial, Clarence Darrow said, I want you to answer the, uh, the Nebraska man. Now his technical name was Hesperopithecus Harold Kukii, but you don't need to remember that. Thank you. Uh, that technical name was given by Henry Fairfield Osborne, the anthropologist and geologist uh, from the East Coast and from Harvard schools, etc. Henry Fairfield Osborne had said, this is the best evidence for evolution we have in the Western Hemisphere. Now that's quite a statement. Mm -hmm. Because in 1923, see the Scopes Evolution Trial that you're asking about took place in 1925 in Dayton, Tennessee. In 1923, uh, we have had a geologist, Harold Cook, who was excavating in northwestern Nebraska. And he found a tooth. Andrew, that tooth for all the world looks half ape and half human. I mean, that tooth was a dead ringer. He just found a tooth. It was 1923. In 1925, Henry Fairfield Osborne at the Scopes Evolution Trial had that tooth in a little box. It was sent by Harold Cook. Henry Fairfield Osborne, the scholar, named it in honor of him. Hesperopithecus, Pithecus has to do with uh, an ape who walks erect. Hesperopithecus. And they built all of this off of a tooth? Well, from that tooth, the London Illustrated Times Sunday edition, not only from a single tooth, they presented an edition that presented the man who had the tooth and he was all humped over. How do you draw a picture of a person from a tooth? Uh, well, they did. <laughs> you have to have a pretty good imagination, I would think. Well, and you have to skew the data yeah. from a tooth, but for the world. That tooth looked half ape, half man. But not only did the London Illustrated Times have this stooped over man with an ax, they had his wife there making some food. They had a child standing by. They had a fence the fellow had built. They had some animals he had des uh, domesticated, all from a tooth. And that's supposed to be enlightenment. Enlightenment, the age of enlightenment. <laughs> so Clarence Darrow, in a little box, had that tooth. He never showed the tooth at the trial. He never showed the tooth to the creation attorney. And uh, he said, explain to me about this tooth. How does that fit? Uh, that shows evolution. And uh, of, course, of course, the creationist said, well, I haven't studied the tooth. Well, we'll give the answer, but I haven't studied the tooth. I need to see it, I need to research it. No, give me an answer. The trial is now. Well. Did he ever show him the tooth? No, he didn't show him the tooth. He didn't show the tooth to the jury. He didn't show the tooth to the so press. So what about this tooth is so convincing? Okay, watch closely. That was 1925. 1923, the discovery had been made by Harold Cook. Had it been named and dubbed the best evidence we have in the Western Hemisphere that man descended from ape. And the London, Sunday Illustrated, London Times gave not only the man but his family and the domestication and all the implications. In 1926, after the trial was over and after evolution was then introduced, into the Dayton public school system. Ultimately, the seeds were sown. 1926, Harold Cook went back to the same gravel pit, excavated and found the rest of the fossil. 
Now, what was it? Was it an ape developing to a man? Or was it a man that had developed from an ape? None of the above. The rest of the tooth looked just like the first one. The rest of the teeth looked just like the first one. The fossil was a pig. A pig. I've heard that. Now, I just went into safety deposit. I unlocked it. We were able to make arrangements. I told you, everything in the museum requires a miracle. Every step along the way. The little widows who have made contributions that got this floor in place. Uh, this took a miracle. We have certified from this scholar through the Smithsonian where he worked. We have one of the teeth, not the original tooth. That was at the trial. Uh, the uh, that was at the trial. Later excavated but from the that tooth pig. from the original jaw. This tooth, now it's been years since I've touched it, and you're going to get to hold it. Well, this is a great honor. I didn't know I'd be doing all of well, this. Well, it's... Holding a little piece of history. This is a piece of history that ultimately introduced evolution into the public school system. And before, before I put it in your hands, it certainly has the markings of a human tooth, but it also has the markings of an ape's tooth. This is from the jaw of Hesperopithecus Harold Kukihai, the Nebraska man that introduced evolution into the public school system, but it's just wow. a pig's tooth. Isn't that amazing? And from this, this is how the Scopes trial was basically swung towards evolution. And from this now, at that trial, Clarence Darrow said, it's a travesty of justice that only one theory of life origin should be taught. Well, once they got evolution in the public school system, they redefined science and redefined all the other issues. So now creation cannot be taught. That's a travesty of justice. That is a travesty of justice. <laughs> and that little pig. That's amazing. Got his pig pen into the classroom. That's amazing. You know, in a sense, here you go, I'll let you take it back. I don't want to drop it or break it. In a sense, God was on trial at the Scopes trial and whether or not he's real versus yes. whether all of this evolved. And yes. that's bound to have made a profound effect upon the whole psyche of the American public. It, it did. Uh, and once, once evolution, naturalism, was introduced in Tennessee, which was conservative, that became the model. And uh, evolution then, as, as I said, ultimately became the only ball game in town. So again, Dr. Ball, this just underscores how important this whole thing on creationism versus really is. evolution is because once that plank was gone, there's so many things that depend upon us being responsible to a creator. That's right. And if you take that away, well, then that allows for homosexuality. Oh, God oh. made them Adam and, and Steve instead of Adam and Eve. Oh, sure. You, you can justify nearly anything if there is no creator. And disruption of the classroom and the morals and the lives and morality uh, and, and the thinking, the thought process of these children. Yep. If, you, if you don't have guidelines for them, as you've have already lined out, then the, the You're children... You're the center of the universe, and so everything revolves around everything. you. And yes. you don't have to think about other people. You can abuse their rights. Yes. Yes. I tell you, the word is accurate, and we do not have to... Uh, be intimidated by oh, no. anybody who claims that the Bible is outdated and it doesn't un understand evolution and all of these facts because they aren't facts. I tell you what, there's a lot in the Word of God. I study it day and night and there's some things you're bringing up I've never seen, never thought of. You brought us some things I haven't thought <laughs> <laughs> We need each other. Yes. Well, that's awesome. I tell you, I sure appreciate this. this I just think it has been tremendous. And hopefully the results of it will be that people will quit just drinking the Kool-Aid and taking these statements that it's a proven fact that evolution is true and they'll recognize that the Word of God is true 
and it's been tested and tried, and it's uh, outlasted Voltaire, the Enlightenment, oh, yes. naturalist, and also all of the humanist. And it's going to be around and forever. We'll find out. Yes, it's awesome. I appreciate it, brother. This Thank has you been so much. So enjoyable. Thank been you. Awesome. Thank you for caring enough to. Oh, See and what also, we have. before we let you go, you need to say a little bit about this museum. I imagine that there's a lot of our viewers who are interested in uh, where are you, when are you open? Very glad to do so. We have a website. You can log on to www.creationevidence.org, just creationevidence.org. We're open to the public Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Uh, there are reasons for that. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, I, I now have refined my schedule where I, uh, by appointment, lead tours through the museum. So you can set an appointment if there are at least 25 people, and uh, I explain what we've talked about firsthand. I've found that that's the best way to communicate. That's Monday through Wednesday, but you have to set that up by appointment. And uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, it's open to the general public, and the, they're automated tours to go through the museum. Once you walk in, uh, you see the wall of truth. You see this geologic column with replication of these artifacts, man-made artifacts scattered throughout the column. And the explanation given that this geologic column is not the result of evolutionary development, but the result of Noah's flood. Mm -hmm. Then you come to the center of the museum and you see the actual artifacts that are replicated. And of course we have full security. Then Here's a very important point. Here at the museum, these scientific artifacts are on one tier. Above them, we have scrolls from the Old Testament, Bibles of the New Testament. The Bible is absolute authority. Amen. Scientific information is only as good as our ability to discover, to observe, to analyze, to classify, to experiment, and predict. But the Bible is true absolutely. On today's program, Andrew interviewed Dr. Carl Baugh. For more information about Dr. Baugh and the Creation Evidence Museum, go to creationevidence.org. Throughout this series, Andrew mentions many statistics and scriptures with regard to creation versus evolution. These references, as well as others pertaining to abortion and homosexuality, have been compiled in the Observing All Things booklet which is Andrew's free gift to you today when you write or call. I'd like to encourage you to get this material. You know, this is different than what I typically teach. I normally just teach straight from Scripture, but we've incorporated into this interviews with doctors who have all of these credentials that can speak to the subject of creationism in a way that I can't. We also have this little booklet that comes with it that has charts and graphs along with scriptures on social issues such as abortion, homosexuality, creationism. This is just, it's a different type of teaching than what I typically do, but it is very powerful. I really felt impressed that I needed to share this with people. These are hot issues that affect us today. So listen to our announcer as he gives you information and please get these products today. Andrew's complete teaching titled, Observing All Things, is available in either a CD or DVD album made from our daily television broadcast. Each of these valuable resources is available for a gift of any amount when you write or call. This entire series is also available for audio download absolutely free from our website. Go to awmi.net to see all the ways you can get this teaching. We want to say a special thank you to the Grace Partners of Andrew Womack Ministries. Your gifts make it possible to put free ministry materials into the hands of many people in need. If you're not already a Grace Partner, we ask you to pray about becoming one today. You can become a Grace Partner or order resources through our website at awmi.net. While there, you can discover more product details and download additional free resources. Or call our helpline Monday through Friday from 4.30 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. Mountain Time at 719-635-1111. To write us, use the address on your screen. 
We appreciate your generosity and hope to hear from you today. Anything that you can do, for we know our God is able to deliver us. And even if He doesn't save us, if He chooses to let us die, we will say, Elohim, Adonai, He is our God. And I want to share with you about Keras Distance Education. This is what we call our online platform or our correspondence courses where you get the material sent to you. But you don't have to come to a physical location. You can receive the teaching through these platforms and then you can send in your test. You actually have interaction and stuff, but you don't have to leave and go to a physical location. And for some of you, this is your answer to how you could receive the teaching from Keras without having to pick up and move to one of these locations. You can get more information by contacting us, but we encourage you to become a part of Karis Bible College through our distance education. It's your spirit that was changed when you got born again. It was created in righteousness and true holiness. And then according to Ephesians 1.13, you were immediately sealed by the Holy Spirit, vacuum packed. The Holy Spirit has encased your perfect born-again spirit. If you are committed to God and following God, I'm telling you, you're a success if you're being sold into slavery. You're a success if you've been lied about and put in prison. God is pleased with you. God loves you. He's more pleased with you than what any of us know. It was like I had no reason anymore to be sick to have pain, to be fearful. I thought that I was not good enough, that God could not forgive me everything that I've done in my life. But then I came into the teaching of Andrew Womack, and I saw it on YouTube on, a, on a, one series about the true nature of God, and it changed my life forever. And I just want to thank uh, Andrew Womack for all what he has preaching, and uh, what a blessing to the whole world. I'd like to invite you to join me on June the 5th and the 6th for our Truth and Liberty Coalition Conference. This is going to be specifically to motivate and equip people how to get involved in their political realm, in the government, and get make a difference, how to vote, how to motivate people to vote, to equip them, to give them tools. We've got James Robinson is going to be our speaker on Friday night. That's going to be powerful. And then we got a whole day Saturday of great speakers lined up, some practical things. We are specifically focusing on pastors, and I believe it's really going to be a powerful thing. So I encourage you to come join us on the 5th and the 6th of June for our Truth and Liberty Coalition Conference right here in Woodland Park.